Before you buy a vintage synthesizer from Japan, these are the top five things you need to know. The first thing to know is that you can get Japanese vintage synthesizers from Japan a lot cheaper than you can from America most of the time. Some of the greatest synthesizers of all time came from companies like Roland, Korg, Yamaha, and Kawaii. And because they manufactured those synthesizers in Japan, the market there is flooded with a lot more and more of them have survived to today. And because of the simple economics of supply versus demand, that means the prices for a lot of those vintage synthesizers are a lot lower compared to the American market where they're less plentiful. The opposite's true too. If you want an Insonic or an Oberheim or a Moog, you're probably going to find better prices in America than Japan. For whatever reason, eBay seems to be the home of the vintage synth market in Japan as opposed to Reverb. So to keep a level playing field, I'm only going to be looking at eBay prices from today. And a disclaimer that the prices in this video are from the day of recording. So by the time you're watching this, the specific prices of the synths you're looking at are likely to be a little different. But overall, these are trends that I've seen in the market that hold true over time. To illustrate the price gap in the Japanese versus American market, let's look at the Juno 106, what I consider to be the keystone species of the entire vintage synth market. Right now, you can get a Juno 106 from Japan for $1,783, which is really reasonable compared to where Juno 106s were a year or two ago. Now, comparing that to the cheapest Juno 106 on eBay from America I could find for $2,095, and that's without shipping, so you'd have to go drive and pick it up in New York. That totals out to be a savings of $300, which is pretty awesome. But wait, it gets better. A synthesizer like the Korg MS-10 was all over the Japanese market, but never got as popular over here in America. So you can get a Korg MS-10 analog synthesizer for $657 versus $1,150 over here in America, which is a savings of almost $500. I think that's pretty astounding. And it gets even better than that. The Roland SH2 is one of my favorite analog mono synths of all time. And these bad boys are from the 70s, so a lot of them have broken down. In fact, mine is in the shop right now. But because there were so many of them in Japan and they didn't import into America as much, you can get a SH2 right now for $1,330 versus a whopping $2,000 if you want to get one from America for a total of $670 in savings. And here's an even better example of why you should buy synthesizers from Japan. What if you want to get a rarer synthesizer like the Yamaha SK30? Same thing, they made a lot of these in Japan and they weren't that popular in America. So in fact, the cheapest one on eBay is $2,100 from Japan. And there are no Yamaha SK30s on Reverb or eBay at all from America. So if you're looking for the specific Yamaha analog synth, the only way to get it is actually from Japan. Next up, we're going to talk about the number one mistake I see people do when they buy a vintage synthesizer from Japan. And this one is really bad because it can damage your synthesizer. But real quick, oh no, someone left a little rabbit in the Velociraptor pit again. Look at that cute little fluffy innocent guy. I bet he probably hasn't even had sex and he's about to die. And the only way that you can save that little rabbit is for you to hit the subscribe button below this video. <laughs> <laughs> so you save the rabbit, right? The number one mistake I see people doing when they buy a vintage synth from Japan is not using a voltage transformer. Japan uses a different voltage than America does. It's basically 200 volts versus 240 volts over here in the States. And if you feed the wrong voltage to your synthesizer, it may behave the wrong way or sound bad, and worst case scenario could actually damage the synthesizer. I see a lot of people on forums saying things like, do I really have to get a voltage converter just for the synthesizer? and you see mixed results, I'm telling you right now, it's not worth it to mess around with it. Why would you put this purchase you just spent hundreds of dollars on in jeopardy? If you look on Amazon, you'll see that voltage converters can be really expensive, but I've got really good news, and that is that synthesizers don't draw a whole lot of voltage. I looked up what I thought might be like the biggest, baddest synth you're likely to buy from Japan, and that would be something like the Roland Jupiter 8, the Mac Daddy of analog synths. And looking in the Jupiter 8 manual, I found that the mighty Jupiter 8 only requires
requires 90 watts of power. So the cheapest voltage transformer for Japanese to American current on Amazon right now is only $35, and that gives you 200 watts of power, which is more than double what you'd need for any synthesizer. And I have it right here. I actually use this guy all the time. I have three or four of these for the Japanese synths that I have, and I can confirm that it's really great. So don't cheap out. Definitely get one of these guys and protect your purchase. It's only $35 to get your synthesizer the electrolytes it craves. I know I'm speaking from an American-centric point of view in case you're watching this video from another part of the world, but the same principle applies if you're in Europe or if you're in another part of the world. You want to pay attention to what the voltage is of the country that you're getting the synth from and the country that you live in. Next up, the third thing we need to talk about is the biggest hidden cost of buying a vintage synth from Japan, which is the import taxes. For whatever reason, I don't see people talking about this at all on YouTube, but it's something that you need to be aware of because it can be substantial. So the math on trying to figure out import taxes can be a little complicated, and depending on what sources you're reading online, I've seen different results of how you're supposed to interpret what the import taxes for your synth is going to be. So for that reason, I'm just gonna give you my general guideline to go off of instead of explaining everything because I'm no expert on the topic. But because I bought a bunch of synths from Japan, I can tell you that it averages out to being 5% of the cost of the synthesizer. Sometimes it's a little more more, sometimes it's a little less, but taken as a whole, it's going to be about 5% of the synthesizer. By the way, I'm in Florida. It might be different in a different state, but as a general rule, you don't need to be so afraid of import taxes because they're not that high, but I wanted to let you know because I think you should factor that into the cost of the synthesizer. A lot of people buy their first vintage synth from Japan and then all of a sudden they get a bill two weeks later for a hundred bucks and they're like, hey, what gives? So for example, let's do the calculation with the Juno 106 I mentioned earlier. That synth cost $1,783 instead of $2,095 over here in America. Multiply 1783 times 0 0.05 or 5% 5 of 1783 is $89. And then add $35 for the voltage transformer and you get a total of $1,907, which is still saving you about $200. So in this case, it would be worth it. But there could be examples of if the price is tight where it might still be cheaper to get a synth from America than Japan. So I want you to be aware of import taxes and their impact on the price of your vintage synthesizer purchase. The fourth topic on our list is a really big one. And that is the difference between the Japanese and American markets in terms of disclosure of the condition of the product. Anytime you're buying a vintage synthesizer, it's a little bit of a trust fall with whoever you're buying it from that they're being honest about the condition of the synthesizer and that everything is working. And aside from a couple of pictures, you really don't have a lot to go on. Unfortunately, in Japan, a lot of the sellers on eBay are not qualified synth technicians or synth enthusiasts. They're professional eBay sellers who get a lot of musical instruments or maybe even things that are not musical instruments in and that's what they do for a living is sell things without knowing all that much about them so even if we assume goodwill and that they're not trying to screw you they could be selling you a product that they don't know is broken in some way synthesizers are complex and you can't always see what's wrong with them just by looking at the outer panel most of the time the problem is like a leaking battery inside of it and if you don't know what you're looking at and i don't think i do you you may not be able to know that there's something wrong with the synthesizer if you're not a musician yourself. So you'll see a lot of listings on eBay for synthesizers at surprisingly low prices, but I encourage you to message the seller and ask them, do all the keys, buttons, faders, sliders, and functions of the synthesizer work before you purchase it? Because a lot of the times the description will just say something like working unit or functions confirmed or something vague like that. So that can be a big red flag that the seller is not like a synthesizer shop that has a name it's going to stake its reputation on, but instead something more like, hey, we got this synthesizer into my pawn shop and I don't know much about synth, so I'm just going to put it on the market for 20% less than everybody else. But I have no idea if 
this thing even works. Just to make this super clear, I'm not trying to put down the Japanese, I'm just saying that this is a reality of that particular market. And unfortunately, I've bought several synthesizers from even the supposed good synthesizer shops that listed synthesizers in excellent condition that I currently have in the shop right now with some serious issues inside. So the thing is, is that unfortunately, just like everywhere else in the vintage synth market, you have to be very careful and thorough. There's nothing wrong with asking the seller additional questions, asking for additional photos if you need them. I want you to make a smart purchase. Please do not throw away your money on a potential brick. And finally, number five, the language barrier and the difficulty negotiating. So this kind of ties into the last point. For a lot of the synth sellers on eBay, this is just a business to them. They are trying to move as many synths as possible or as many products as possible. And maybe your synthesizer that you're looking at is just one of thousands. So I found that Japanese sellers tend to not accept offers, or if they do, it's only a little bit off, and they're really good bare knuckle bargainers where they will make sure that they get the maximum price they can get for that synthesizer because they know they're selling it cheaper than what you're going to pay for it over in America. And even if they're being super transparent and honest with you, there's still a language barrier. So sometimes a question you might ask might get lost in translation and they might respond to you in a way that they think makes sense in your circumstance, but you're actually getting a different different impression of the synthesizer you're going to buy. So it's just super important that you are thorough and do your due diligence before you buy a vintage synthesizer from Japan. I'm Vulture Culture, and if you'd like to see demos of my vintage synthesizers, I actually have a playlist right here that you can click on. And this is a playlist full of demos of my vintage synths, as well as some modern stuff, rat gear, drum machines, all sorts of synth related goodness. So definitely check that out. And thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.